the Kinos were also written uh, for Tokacha. And uh, in the olden days, uh, uh, the Chazan, the, the person in Chazan, I mean, we know this from Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, there are all sorts of qualifications for a Chazan. It's not that he's got a beautiful voice. I mean, I remember uh, in the 70s when I went to Roosevelt University, so they had uh, a conservatory of music. So one time I was going through the hallway and a person of color was singing hymns from the Yamim Nabraim. And I went over, he had a whole book. I said, well, what is it? He goes, oh, I'm going to sing in the choir of Reformed Congregation and that they're such lovely people and that such beautiful music and it's so intricate, the music. And, uh, and so, so the choirs, uh, the Amenu, are the antithesis of what the, the, the Chazanim was supposed to be in the old days, it was supposed to be the head of the community. For example, in, in Yeshiva's Brisk, uh, the, the Golem were the ones in the Chazanim, and for Nila, Ravarn was the one who said, Nila, now, who do you want to be the, you know, the Havdil in the Olympic race? Who's supposed to be the fourth uh, baton carrier, the fastest uh, person, you know, the, the strongest person? So, so it was never a matter of how melodious, how beautiful were the, the singing. The person who got up uh, to, to Davin was the one who could inspire the people the most. He said about Reb Chaim, when he would give words to Tofacha, he would say, Avala nachnu, and he'd start to cry, and the whole community would cry with him. No big, long speeches, no big anything. He just said it the way it was. And people said, if he's crying, and he is doing tshuva, what should I say? What should I do? And this is another part of the of the keynotes <coughs> that's been lost. You know, who says the keynotes? How do they say the keynotes? Now, the next section of the keynotes, uh, the ones written after the ones by Eliezer Akali, and of course, there were also keynotes written by Akhmed Korat. So, this is the second set of keynotes are written mainly by the Chachme Ashkenaz. And they, they discuss the destruction of various communities in pogroms that took place throughout the ages. Uh, uh, for example, the Asara Haruge Malchus, Asara Haruge Malchus, the 10 martyrs that we read about on Yom HaKippurim, and we read about today, about how the nations of the world, uh, what they, uh, they know the halachas so, so well, they know that kidnapping is a capital punishment, and therefore uh, they, want, they said we would, we would uh, put the 10 Shvatim to death, if they were here, but they're not here, so we'll kill you. Uh, you're going to serve in, the, in their stead. What is it? The, the, the United Nations can, can, can make themselves a Sanhedrin, a based in. They're going to rule against Kral Yisrael. It's nonsensical. But those are the facts that are going on for thousands of years, 2,000 years. And so Aquinos remind us uh, of, of all the Korban that took place throughout the ages. They mentioned the uh, 41st Kina, uh, which was written by Malami Rutenberg. So uh, when the French decided they would pile up every manuscript, every book that they had, and in the central square of Paris in the year 1242, they burned them all. They burned, for days it went on. It wasn't just the Nazis who burned books. It wasn't the Nazis who just burned people. And I saw Ruge Malchus and talk about it. The, the cruelty, the inhumanity that's been shown to the Jews throughout the ages. All of this is a result of the Korban Beit HaMikdash. And this is the second set of keynotes. We talk about every Korban, every, every pogrom, every tragedy that has befallen the Jewish people. The Crusades, everything else. Then finally, uh, the third section of keynotes, they're around a little bit under 10 keynotes. So they begin with the word of Zion, Zion. Now, none of those keynotes, unlike the first set, the first group, which talks about the actual Korban Beit Hamikdash, the destruction of the temple, and the direct result of that. And then the second group of keynotes, which talk about the historical destruction. So, uh, 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 but the third set, just talk about Sion. 
about how beautiful Yerushalayim was, how beautiful Eretz Yisrael was. Now, why did Kino address that? I mean, Kino that Ben Sion spoke about. Sion, hello, Shali. We sing that at, at our, our happiest moments. We sing it on 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 simple Torah. Sion, 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 hello, Shali. Why do we say ay, 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 tzion? Because we don't have tzion anymore. But we long for tzion. We, and, and, and so we include Tisha B'Av in all of our prayers. For example, uh, in Musa, we say, B'nai Beis Chokabas Chila, right? What song do we use? We use the song of Ali Tzion at the end of Akinos. Right? The same songs in the whole year. We never forget Yerushalayim. We never forget what it means to, to not be in Yerushalayim. And so, and so, in our greatest times of joy, under the chuppah, we break a glass. Okay. There's an argument of why you break the glass. And so there should be decorum. And the Gemara talks about how Abora uh, 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 shattered a, a, a vase, a very expensive vase, uh, so that people shouldn't have levity at the Simcha. But today they say we break a glass because of the, in the moment of my greatest joy, I still acknowledge that I can't have full joy because uh, I don't have the base of Mikdash. When we finish our houses, we're supposed to leave a spot un unpainted or unfinished uh, to, to indicate that our lives are unfinished that without uh, Yerushalayim. So that's the, 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 those are the three sections of Kinos. Again, I'm going to come back to the themes uh, of Kinos. And I just want to talk about Tisha B'Av. It's both a Yom Tzom. It's a fast day as well as a Yom Avelis, a day of mourning. So Megillus Eichon, uh, Sir, again, as I mentioned last night, serves as a basis for so many of the keynotes. Uh, and, and as I mentioned last night, that the first four chapters of Eicha follow the Aleph days uh, to acknowledge that we lack the language to praise God. We lack language to come back to God. We lack language to say what we've done. We lack language to say uh, how we wish we could undo what we've done. And uh, Yermio Anavi, when he left to purchase some land, uh, and he came back already, and he was looking to see in Yushalayim, in the, in the Yushalayim the, from the Mizbeach, the Amud Ha'ona, the, the cloud that always went straight up to heaven uh, uh, from the Mizbeach. On his way back, he didn't see it. Oh, he, 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 was, he was dumbfounded. But all of a sudden, there's no way to meet us. Where did it go? What happened to it? And again, these are some of the themes that I'm going to get back to. But, and I again should mention last night, in the fourth chapter of Echov, how he eulogized King uh, uh, Yosha with the Aleph days. And again, because he was such a righteous king, uh, uh, because we mourned for him truthfully and honestly. So for the 22 letters of the Aleph days that created the universe, so our Kodesh Baruch who delayed the destruction of Beis Hamikdash another 22 years. So uh, now on Tisha B'av, we mourn. <coughs> we, have, <coughs> we have an obligation to mourn, just like on Pesach we have an obligation to recount uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, our exaltation when we left Yerushalayim. And this is also found in one of the keynotes that. Uh, we, we contrast the chase in Yushalayim and the chase in Mitzrayim. In other words, how did I feel when I left Mitzrayim? And, and how do I feel when I left Yushalayim? In other words, that contrast, it's like a, 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 a person who makes a, a, a wedding and he prepares everything. And on the day of his wedding, God forbid the son is killed on the way to the past in the car accident or something else. How do, you, how do you describe such one? How do you describe such a, such a, a horrible, such a tragedy? So again, Tisha B'Av is a day when we're 
to remind ourselves of all catastrophes that have befallen us since the Korban Abayis, every single one is related to, uh, to the being thrown out of Yushalayim in the core place of Mikdash. And so this is another uh, idea. Now, and that's also why uh, people, they don't understand how could we be mourning today for something that took place, you know, 586 before the common era and 70 before in the common era. What are you, crazy? You never, you were never there. You didn't know what, what are you, what are you talking about? Even? And uh, again, uh, this acknowledgement that uh, just as in Pesach, every Pesach, person has to view himself as if he just left uh, Mitzrayim. Same thing with, with uh, Tisha B'Av. That every Tisha B'Av we have an obligation to realize, uh, to, to see ourselves, because had we done Shuvah properly, had we corrected, had we done a Tikkun, the, the corrections that we need to do, then there would be no more for Mabai. There'd be no more destruction. And the Rambam says that there's a contrast, the Rambam, uh, uh, a contradiction that on the one hand, uh, 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 the Jewish people won't be redeemed until they do tshuva. On the other hand, we're going to be redeemed. So uh, Moshe spoke about this I think two weeks ago. That what's the uh, the steer? How do you resolve the steer? The contradiction of the Rambam by saying that the Jewish people will, will, will be redeemed uh, because the Jewish people will do tshuva. The Jewish people have the capacity to do tshuva. And therefore, so, so it's belief in the Jewish people's ability to do tshuva that gives us the, the belief that the Jewish people will be redeemed from this current exile and the base of Nicholas will be rebuilt. And, uh, and, and this, this is also another theme of Tisha B'Av, that to this Aur Lubavenu, to awaken our hearts to cause us to, to realize that we have it within us to do tshuva. You know, in, in Europe, uh, they wouldn't do it today. These books cost so much money. But in Europe, you know, we still have here those inexpensive keynotes, these really thin paper keynotes. I think they were, it used to be 25 cents, I think, the last time it was, or 95 cents, a dollar and a quarter, whatever it was. But every year in Europe, when they leave the show, on Tisha B'Av, they'd throw them out, put them in the shame of God. They were so sure that Mashiach was coming, they said, we'll never need to use these keynotes again. Unfortunately, the, the way we, today, we make such expensive books on keynotes, it's like, uh, it's, it's like an event. Uh, instead of a, a Corbin, uh, oh, I'll make a buck, I'll write another book. What? Okay, it has Torah in it, no doubt about it. Well, Halir had a lot of Torah in it. So, so uh, I don't mean to criticize Halila Pass, the people who wrote the Sakinos books. They're very helpful, they're very useful, they're very inspiring. But my, my, the point I'm making is that in the Doros Akadmonium, in the prior generation, they were so sure. And you look at the Spartan, in the Arch Israel, the old Spartan women, uh, not that I'm telling people to look at women, but I mean the old Spartan women, they used to, in the afternoon of Tisha B'Av, two, three o'clock, they used to sweep out, they used to sweep out the house, and they used to whitewash, they would paint the walls of the houses. Why? On Tisha B'Av, the afternoon, you're ready, ready to chalash, ready, you haven't eaten, you haven't drunk, it's a million degrees in there, just roll. What are you doing this for? Because it's such an moon of Mashiach was coming, they had to prepare the house for the Shia coming. That type of an amuna, that type of a belief. I think in many respects, uh, many of the Jews from the former Soviet Union, uh, after Israel won the war, especially the 67 war, when uh, the, the Soviets were talking about how the uh, uh, Israel is going to be vanquished and Israel is going to be destroyed, and, they, and then all of a sudden the music starts, <laughs> the different music of catastrophe starts playing over the Soviet radio, then the Jewish people knew that the Israelis were victorious, that a Kodesh Baruch was bringing back the 
Jewish people in Eretz Yisrael after so many thousands of years, that gave hope to the Jewish people as well. So the idea that hope springs eternal, uh, which is a nice phrase uh, uh, used by the nations of the world, for the Jewish people, it's a whole, it's a different phrase. The hope does spring eternal. The hope that we will turn back to the Torah, that we'll be tshuva, we'll come back to it. So, uh, so, so now in the morning, as you see, we're all sitting on the ground. Uh, we have an Avelos Yishana. In other words, the, the, a normal uh, a morning period, somebody dies on you suddenly, unexpectedly, especially today with Corona. They, they mentioned that poor woman in Petach Tikva, the, uh, the, the uh, early childhood teacher, that the parents were in lockdown, when were in uh, uh, Quarantine, thank you. And and uh, uh, they sent their child to school, and uh, the teacher got corona. And then after she was taken off the respirator, she said, I'm begging you, to, uh, I, don't ever, anybody ever do this. If you're in quarantine, keep your kids home. Don't send them to school. And then she took a turn for the worse, and she died. Suddenly, they thought she was recovering. They had her give heartfelt words. And boom, one second she died. So the the idea of so when somebody dies in you suddenly, the whole not only the family but the whole community is impacted. So that's through the normal morning that you start out with the Yom Shemay for other the day of the, of the death is the greatest tragedy, and then you gradually go down. So to Shiva, then Shloshim, then the Shana. It, it gets lower. Rabbi Eugene Zecher, Tzadim Kodashim Bracha used to talk about it as you have a beautiful dining room table, beautiful, shiny dining room table, and you take a nail and you knock it in, but you leave out a piece of it. You don't knock it in completely. And then every time you run your hand over it, in the beginning you're cutting your fingers because the nail is still sticking up. But after each time you do it and you, you're serving on everything, Eventually, the nail itself gets pushed down. And eventually, the nail, you can see the nail on the beautiful tabletop. The nail is still there. The loved one, the memory is still there. But the pain, you remember. So the idea of Tisha B'av is, is inverted for normal morning. For normal morning, the great pain begins and then it descends. When it comes to Tisha B'av, that's the Vela Shoshana, that's the opposite. That you have to build up to it. You have to, and the culmination of this building up to it, that's Tishabha. That's Tishabha. That it, it, it's a focus and all these different things. The three sections of the Kinos the, the being thrown out of the Air Israel and, and God being thrown out of his home and a world, a lawless, godless world. You see what goes on today. Then uh, uh, the second section is. Is again the the ball of pogrom. The third section, of course, is Zion. What do we lose? So again, this morning, as I mentioned last night, we pull back the curtain because the shkin is gone. When the shkin is gone, there's no reason to have a curtain. In other words, Titus of Russia couldn't have done what he did in the Kodesh Hakdoshim if the shkin wasn't already gone. If we hadn't already destroyed the base, the base of Migdash Shalmata, none of what happened could have, could have taken place. So we destroyed the base of Mikdash, and again now, uh, so in the afternoon, there was a debate all morning. God said, should I destroy the temple, or should I destroy the Jews? If I destroy the temple, I keep the Jews. If I destroy the Jews, I keep the temple. And it wasn't until the afternoon, at the very end of the ninth of all, that the temple started to burn, and it burned through the whole day of the tent. So this idea that in the afternoon already, we can get up and sit on chairs. We can put on our talus and our stone. We can recite the brachas that we didn't recite in the morning. We can pull the curtain back because what is Goroff to decide that he's remain with us. So this is Sosam Silasi. That's why I know we recited this morning uh, the Mishabarach for the Cholam. But there are many who don't. I think Rabbi Yashar Bar Salvechik said you shouldn't recite. Uh, Mishabarach for the Cholam, or anything additional, uh, any Chinos or Bar because 
because and and Tishma of Sasan Tilasi, my my prayers have been closed. And it's not until the afternoon we can say nothing. In other words, give us an akama, give us a, a cancellation. Now I'd like to go through 17 different themes of the keynotes. I'll try to do this quickly and then we'll start the keynotes. So the first one of the first themes is Hashem was wrong by his by the base of Mikdash being destroyed. In other words, it's not that God's gonna judge the the nations of the world. Uh, in other words, the base the base in the the, the the two sides are not the nations of the world and, and the Jewish people, but the two sides are the nations of the world against God and the Jewish people. Then the second theme is the nations of the world consider the Jews to be filth and refuse, that uh, they look at us as, as, as garbage. Uh, as I mentioned, that they, they can mate us, they can like we're horses or, or animals. Then the third, uh, the, and, the, and when the, Jew, the name of the Jewish people are, are, is Achil Yisrael, is Achil Hashem, Achil Hashem Hashem. Third theme of Kinos, again, is blasphemy. That uh, uh, the blasphemy of God, that uh, where were you? Where was God? There is no God. And we see this as well by the anarchists today. The, a godless world is a, a godless world is a lawless world. The fourth idea was, as I mentioned earlier, was the Corbin was unexpected and sudden. Nobody believed it. In Beitar, half of the city was uh, rejoicing, while the other half was being butchered. They could, nobody believed it. Nobody believed that human beings could destroy the base and make their house of God. No one. The Jewish people didn't believe it, but it happened. Uh, the fifth idea, of course, is Hester Punim, that God hides his face from us that the intimate relationship is growing. The sixth idea is the, the uh, unexpected uh, uh, mourning uh, that, that, that resulted. The seventh idea, as I mentioned, is that we're responsible for the court facing this thing, or it be rebuilt. We can't just say, oh, we're suffering from what our parents did. We're suffering from what our grandparents did. No, we're suffering from what we do. We're suffering because we haven't done shuva. Because we haven't the the the, the, set, the first base of English was destroyed because of the of the three cardinal sins, Avodazara, Gilarayas, Shvichas Damim. That we fixed in seventy years, but seen as inam, baseless hatred, that we haven't fixed for two thousand years. We're jealous of others. We talk about others. We're hateful of others. But the Chafetz Chaim Heritage Foundation has all their films already always on this day. To talk about Shmir Salashin, how to talk, who to speak to, how to, how to have respect for one another. The, uh, the eighth idea was uh, was was the idea of that uh, That, in other words, who entered the basement? What went on there? That 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 the coin god could only go into the Holy of Holies once a year. Here Titus of Russia came in with a sword, with Zonas. He sliced the, the, the parochas. It bled. He thought he killed God. He threw it over the, in the Kodesh Gedoshim. He did this mus with the, the, with the, with the prostitutes. Who were these people? How could these people enter the house of God? Such a desecration, such a, it, it's inconceivable that such butchers and murderers would go into an intimate place where, where of holiness. Just like through the years, are the parrots before a Jewish wedding would take place? Why were so many of the weddings at night rather than the day? Because the, the parrots, would go and would have to have sleep with the bride before the, the Jewish boy could have uh, could get married. Such minuvalim that they would defile your marriage canopy and defile your, your marital bed. This is this is who came in to the base of Migdash. That's another idea that Kinos are trying to remember, to remind us of. 
Ninth is a cosmic tragedy. I mentioned last night, we were talking about the keynotes of the, zo of the, uh, the zodiac, of the signs of the zodiac, because it, it, the, when the base of Mictus was destroyed, the sun uh, was dimmer, fruits didn't taste as, as good, the environment uh, uh, was destroyed. All these things were a result of the Chorban Beis Amikdash. The Gemara says that had the Goyim realized uh, how beneficial the Beis Amikdash was for them, they would have put, instead of putting uh, uh, soldiers against us to destroy the Beis Amikdash, they would have put soldiers, two soldiers on each Judah. If we ever sin, whack, stop, don't, don't do an Avera. Uh, tenth uh, uh, was that the Chorban Beis Amikdash was not a result of one sin. It was not a, a result of a sin for a year or two. It was a result of sinfulness for generation after generation, where each generation added a new innovation, a new hack to, to desecrate God's name, unfortunately. Uh, the 11th uh, theme of, of the Kinos is that God is in exile with us, and God is also homeless. Uh, they give the example in the Kinos of, of a bird on top of a building that the bird is homeless. It took away its home. It's flying around. Where can it go? Where can it be? What should it do? So our Kodesh Boruch, who is also in exile with us, which, by the way, is one of the things that's mentioned, how the Jewish people, one of the uh, assurances that the Jewish people will be redeemed, because God needs a home too. God's, home is, God's name is being desecrated, so to end the desecration of God's name, so that's the assurance, as it were, that even if we're not worthy of tshuva, we'll be helped to do tshuva so that God can come back and restore order to the world. Twelfth idea is that the Christians, the other religions, don't say that that um, that mankind has destroyed the base of Mikdash. They say that God destroyed the base of Mikdash, and he hates the Jewish people, and that he abandoned them. He's no longer one. This is another thing. And uh, Yosha Bear Soloveitchik said, you know, when he used to uh, take the train between Boston and New York to the pier, so, you know, in the days before now, today everybody's got a beard. All the homeless people have a beard, and people people have a beard, everybody's got a beard. But in those days, if you had a beard, they knew already you were a, a, a from Yid. You know, especially if you were a keeper, you wore a hat. You know, everybody understood. It's a fedora, you know, although they used to wear fedoras at football games. But, uh, no, no, no. Oh, there was a guard that was just convicted in Germany of being complicit in over 5,500 murders. So my son mentioned he was also <laughs> fedora. He was also, what? Yeah, they were pushing him. In the, I did see that picture. That they were that he was in a wheelchair, and they didn't convict him. They gave him a two-year suspended sentence for killing 5,500 people. Nice. That's that's sweet, right? Bulk what? Bulk yeah, bulk discount. You know that that that, that uh, Jews. You, you 5,500. Oh, okay, <laughs> stay home. You, you know, no no problem. They're only Jews. This is a world that. Uh, he wants to forget the Holocaust and per perpetrate another one and let the Iranians do it. You know, during the Six Day War, they, they wouldn't even let the, uh, the American planes, and America wanted to send planes to Israel, they wouldn't let them uh, fly over. Britain said no, Germany said no, France said no. So even for the reinforcements sent by America, so the other nations of the world wouldn't let uh, the stuff, the reinforcements come over. Why? Why? If not for just bald-faced anti-Semitism. And that they, they look at us, God forbid, as Christ killers. So this is what the Catholic Church, they used to, uh, 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 the Bible thumpers used to see a Jew in New York on a train, and they'd say, where's your God? Where's your God? And uh, that's why when, when Eretz Yisrael was reestablished, it was a big uh, uh, Patch uh, to the to the Catholic Church, and uh, with Yosha Bear used to have debates with them. He had one famous debate uh, with an Archbishop 
in a French hotel that all the details were written there. The Rav Yashiver wiped the floor with it. But, but aside from all of the, uh, of the, of the uh, debate questions that you know, the, the Cardinal had, he couldn't answer the, the, uh, the, the keynote that Rav Yashiver confronted him with one line from the keynote that, that God also is in exile. Not that God destroyed the temple, but God is with us. That they couldn't answer. And I remember discussing with Rabbi Yosef Salavechik, uh, Rabbi Arn's son, Rabbi Moshe's brother, that uh, when we got back to Shalim, the uh, Catholic Church had to change a lot of their theology. That, uh, you know, first it was God abandoned the Jews because they don't have Israel. Then when they had the land of Israel, well, they don't have Yerushalayim. Then when we got part of Yerushalayim, well, they don't have all of Yerushalayim. Now we have all of you, and, and so he was discussing with Rabbi Yashabir that will the Catholic Church, if we, from the, the Kinos, if we rebuild the, the base of Mikdash, will you accept the Kodesh Baruch Will you accept the Jewish people? Will you accept our mission? And he equivocated, he couldn't answer. So their theology is based that, that uh, uh, and, and our Kinos are based to refute the notion that uh, God destroyed the base of Mikdash. No, God permitted the destruction of the base of Egypt. He didn't destroy the base of Egypt. He, his home was destroyed by these, uh, was shined by these Romans, by the enemies of mankind. Uh, then um, I mentioned already the Chiyav on Tisha B'Av, to be sad. Uh, the, 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 uh, uh, just like it's a mitzvah on Pesach to be happy to see yourself as if you just left the uh, Mitzrayim, so too you have to look at yourself as, as, as we just left the uh, uh, and again, uh, the again, the, 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 the antithesis of the Tzais in Yitzrayim and the Tzais in Yitzrayim, again, to be so rare uh, that, that we lost the closeness to the Kodesh Baruch on Mount Sinai and, uh, and the, our great grief. Uh, a fifteenth uh, theme is our alienation from a Kodesh Baruch Hu, uh, uh, from the Jewish people. That in uh, our, our Sinai, we talk about how close we were to him, and now unfortunately, the, where is he? The Sasan Filasi won't even listen to us. The sixteenth theme, but today, right? He won't. In, he won't listen to us in the morning unless we really do true tshuva. Sixteenth. Uh, theme is uh, uh, the the abasement, uh, the, the debasement of of of, uh, of the Jewish people of the nation. The, the, uh, we see that with the Kina, where Yirmiyahu finds this woman uh, in black garments, uh, disheveled, and uh, uh, he asks her, "What are you? Are you are you, are you a woman?" That used to be noble and beautiful and, and uh, an aristocrat, or are you some demonic creature? And uh, in, the, in the dialogue, she says, I, I'm the Jewish people. I am Nash Israel. She says, so Do tshuva. She says, I can't do tshuva. I'm so full of sadness. I, I, I'm so devastated. You know, sometimes after uh, a, a person loses a loved one, they can't, they can't do anything. They're paralyzed, whether it's with fear or sadness. So, Knesset Yisrael said to him, Yo, I, I can't even pray for myself. And uh, he said, no, you're wrong. You can pray for yourself. The, this idea that, that as a result of your grief, you can't pray. No, Pulpaker, grief enables you to pray more. That's the idea of Tzvila. The, the Machok speaks the Rambam and the Ramban. The Tzvila, the Arais, and the Rabbonan. And the idea that the more you're in danger, the more you have a chiyav to pray. As you know, the only one who can save is a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And, um, and then um, the 17th idea is that the Rome sent four legions, four generals to destroy the base of Mikdash. And uh, three of them were successful and one of them was not. The Kosovo and Malravi that legion failed. And so that shows that the Shekhinah is still there. 
Shekhinah still remains in Yerushalayim. And uh, because, again, Rome understood that, that uh, uh, if, if the temple stands and if the Jewish people remain, they can't win. The ultimate victory was not theirs. The ultimate victory remained uh, that of the Jewish people. And that's another theme of, of the keynotes, uh, that, that the Shechina is still there. And because the Shechina is still there, uh, 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 the Shechina is still protecting the Jewish people. The wings of God, the hand of God, still stands over the, the, and, and protects the welfare of the Jewish people. And as we're about to begin the keynotes, may we take to heart all these different themes of the keynotes, these, these uh, 17 themes, the three parts of the keynotes, and, uh, and, and be able through our uh, uh, deeply heartfelt recitation of these keynotes, may we be Zoha that the idea of Sasa and Silasi will be removed, that God will hear all of our tefillos, and that a Kodesh will redeem us, and that this will be the very, very last year that the, uh, the, the throwing out of the keynotes into the Shemos box by the Jews of Europe and the uh, sweeping of her house and whitewashing the walls of the old Spartan woman in, in Eretz Israel made their belief in, in our impending, in our, uh, our ultimate redemption, may that be fulfilled for our generation for not just for the benefit of the Jewish people, that we can go home to Eretz Yisrael and Yerushalayim, but for the benefit of all mankind, where the anarchy and the, the violence and the bloodshed that we see in so many places today, that that should all be remedied uh, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes back to his home in, in Yerushalayim and in the rebuilt Beit HaMikdash. Uh, that when God is in the house, everything in the world will be different. And we need to go for that every year. 195. Uh, uh, Shabbos through many. Uh, uh, again, 